Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Ignite Visibility University. Today, I am so excited. I have Michael Kelly here with me. He is founder of Investment Science. And uh, Michael, really excited to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. So we had a minute and we're talking a little bit about investment science. I found it really interesting to hear about the background of why you started the company. Tell us a little bit about how it got started and uh, what your mission is. Sure. So we originally started investment science all the way back in 2009 for the ability to have uh, stable returns through specific financial products and algorithms. And it's essentially a concept if one were to have $100 to invest, that would go into a different financial product, a different time frame, a different strategy through proprietary uh, data elements. And that's actually how uh, the company evolved over the past decade to move a little bit more towards consulting because a lot of the skills developed from building out that software and the definition behind that software was just because many premier institutions were during black swan events like coronavirus will lose 15 to 30 percent plus and we may be on to an interesting product that we're not going to say that could 100 percent eliminate that but to potentially stabilize returns for all types of investors, similar to uh, say like Betterment or Motif, which isn't really, they're not, we wouldn't be exactly like that. Uh, I can't talk too much about it till we launch it, but we could essentially match uh, buyers of financial services, people who just want investments to some of the best algorithms out there for a screen that is very interesting to build it out for somebody who doesn't know how to code. Any type of question you think you could have, we'd be able to answer for people developing the strategies. That's really Which interesting. You, what what goes mm -hmm. into that process, like building an algorithm? What what does that look like? Uh, it, with algorithms themselves, I mean, th there's execution algorithms. So a giant fund, if they're doing let's say a billion shares of Microsoft, there could be different measures like value weighted average price or only execute when it crosses a moving average. So there, there's all different measures you can do it, but there's also statistical models such as like stab arbitrage where we could look at pricing differentiations between different financial products or different timeframes of different strategies, which means some strategies with uh, economic event strategy, such as spot FX, you could look at something as simple as GDP announcements and see historically how do currencies react to that, right? In the split second, or you could look at something a bit longer term and you could combine them all so they don't really move together. So on, on that note, um, I don't pretend to be as deep as you are into this world, but I find it absolutely fascinating. And I have always been a believer that uh, as uh, the markets evolve, it's going to turn into this point where news and um, public sentiment uh, will dictate um, the moving of the markets. And we're seeing that more now than ever. So in the algorithms that you're creating now, um, are they centered more around um, sentiment and and how that impacts um, movement in the markets and then responding to that? Or is it based off of more common financial metrics? It would be based off of everything you just announced, really anything you could think of about a company, almost like a data warehouse, like any question you could have, such as like what time of day is the best time or uh, with some of these sentiments, what things actually move together, but there's always new data feeds, like what happened with Reddit and GameStop that you'd have to monitor and you cannot, perf you cannot perfect these things, but there are companies who more or less consistently generate returns, but they're not going to disclose how they do it. Only one or two people know it and anyone who's coding it, um, they have to sign all this documentation that they can never talk about it. Do you think there'll ever be a point where uh, they've developed a model 
that uh, can bring a level of certainty and statistical significance from that that's that certainty in that modeling that it it makes it so that there's a huge competitive advantage for certain institutions that have certain algorithms. Well, there's a few things. It breaks down to even the hardware where it's located. Like a lot of banks and everything will have them in Jersey City, right, where the exchanges are. So there's a concept of the latency of how quickly, because I talked to some people that want to do it out of hobbies. I said, that's a great concept, but do you have the hardware if you want to do it in real time? And I did it in college, just like something as simple as triangular arbitrage, which everybody knows if you just buy three different currencies, it will... Uh, it will kind of turn green that every second you could make it, but everybody else, most of investments are electronically done. That's some, I haven't kept up with it as much, but something like 85% plus it's electronic. So it's not even done manually, but one could argue what happened, which is Reddit. If it's all electronic, there is, but then you see on the other side of these big players are pushing down those instruments, right? It shot up and then, on the other side, they go down. So there's a, I used to not believe this as much. There's a bit of randomness. There's random walk theory. There's all these different models. There's Garch, there's Arima models. It's just a, and if you zoom back a bit, that's kind of reversion to the mean and that prices have an average and you will revert back to them at some point in time. And you could look at even coronavirus that's similar to the Spanish flu and that different data points, but that lasted about two years. And I foresee people going back into the office, not until sometime next year, not even in the next few months, not till next year. So Ignite Visibility listeners, take a second just to think about what Michael's saying here. So everything eventually reverts back to the actual valuation were it not, you know, news oriented, but these different data points skew it in different directions. And so, so Michael, let's take a step back. We talked a little bit about Reddit and we talked a little bit about GameStop anomalies, things we haven't seen before micro movers, moving major markets. What happened there? What, what's your thoughts on that? I, th I think it just turned into a thing of like, the short squeeze where an individual looked at, you know, these top companies are the most shorted the guys. Let's all go in and buy this. And that Reddit form turned into a mini like fund of its own of just the amount of participants of the amount of volume they could push. And some of these funds didn't, in, that could also be considered a black swan event. They didn't anticipate it. So the question is, how do you, resolve a black swan event and it's something as simple as controlling your risk that every dollar you invest you have a max downside and you have potentially derivative instruments to offset that or these won't always work like stop losses that you can only lose so much but sometimes the liquidity is not there and that's when these losses occur is that you assume things are great until they're not and eventually, you know, it's the reversion of the mean. Like it's spiked up. It's going to spike back down and probably go somewhere in between the two um, to revert back. And even with COVID, we'll revert back to the mean. You look at real estate, San Francisco, New York City. Uh, six months ago, everybody was panicking. And now there's a lot of people saying those are like dividend stocks that very good price point for people who want to move and rent right when they reopen the offices but on the other coin, many of the positions in Manhattan are being moved out to Delaware, North Carolina, Texas, low cost areas, and same with California tech, a lot of those companies are moving down to Texas. And that will revert to the mean too. It's like extreme directions on both ends that knee jerk reactions of companies that we're going down here, but then they're not looking to the long term when the virus is gone. I find that really interesting. Um, I just want to spend one second. So yeah. you had talked about Reddit and you had talked about this movement. And when I think about that, I think about 
Well, um, you know, I subscribe to the Motley Fool, for example, right? It's an investment thing. You know, it, isn't that something that could move a market um, on a micro level? Um, what about these hedge funds that have large amounts of investment? They essentially move markets. When multiple people buy, they do. So in, in this situation, there was major backlash from corporate America, not necessarily corporate America, but from investment America. But but really, ha hasn't that been some of what's been going on historically for a long time? Um, can you just talk to me a little bit about that? Am, am I off base at all? It's, just curious. It is a free market with bidders and sellers and on both sides of the equation, you can see things that go wrong with financial institutions and on the consumer. But I'm not an attorney, but it's on the gray area and even the sec is talking about on both sides they're going to investigate because on both sides it could be considered unfortunately market manipulation and that you're boosting up a stock and you go in public with that you buy it beforehand and you're not even a financial advisor but then there's also the other side of the coin saying well that social media phrase so I don't have a direct answer and i'm not trying to give you a political answer but it's kind of a gray area on both sides of the equation that we've seen financial institutions receive fines. And now we have on the consumer side pushing something up, but then you're seeing what's happened on the other side, it's getting pushed back down. So it's, and then it also goes to my point of uh, markets of some randomness of some events and the SEC's stated that they're investigating both sides on the consumer and on the fund side. Really interesting. So, so you know, what are you most excited about in your industry right now? Um, what's some of the innovative stuff that people can take to their own industry when they're thinking cross industry? They they might be interested in like what what's kind of the innovative stuff that that's really kind of going through your mind? Well, and that's what's interesting about the company. Like we focus a lot on uh, business to business consulting advisory services. So we're all about objective consulting without compromise, which really means you need us there a week, that's okay. You need us there five years, that's okay. And we try not to have strategic ties to vendors, just giving you objective advice. So even your questions like, well, how does this tie to other industries? Some of the latest trends you're seeing are like graph databases, like Neo4j, MongoDB, Apache. What's, what's MongoDB mean? Tell me about that. That's just like a type of database in regards to the fact if you don't know what something would look like, something that's constantly changing, like a document, for example, you have to store a bunch of documents. There's different technologies for different businesses for different scenarios. So that would be one for MongoDB. And in regards to some of the big data architecture, it's quite interesting. There's Apache Spark and Apache Flink, which really means we could use other programming languages such as Python that are pretty simple to code in that even business people can, and we could convert it to the JVM, meaning we get the speed of Java, but the simplicity of Python. So you almost, I'm not going to say you don't need Java, you still do, but some organizations can leverage the hardware out there the technological hardware and then keep things simple to get things done. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of people in Ignite Visibility listeners, you know, for, for you, this is, I would challenge you to think about this, but with, with something like Python, which is a programming language that allows you to, um, in my experience, do quite a bit of crawling in data gathering. Uh, if you set it up right and use it right, you know, you could gather data around whatever topics you want and take that and use that data however you want and build that into any interface you want and use it for any modeling you want. And for me, I, I, I am excited to meet you today, Michael, because I'm um, very much in that world, but more on the digital marketing side, which yeah. is a little bit different. But, you know, so again, if, you know, if somebody wanted to kind of do that for the first time, um, you know, what would that process kind of look like for them for building their own model? You could simply just go into like GitHub and then type in Python or whatever model. So with financial modeling, you could start with like, look up Garch or Arima models, which really is kind of the, a reversion to the mean concept. There's a lot of mathematics behind them. Or even uh, look up scikit-learn, 
cheat sheet if you want to get into data science. Or we have a on our website on investmentsey.com. That's one word investment sey.com. If you click on insights, we have all different types of posts, just like you're talking about, from you know, applying data science, where to start, all the way up to project management and change management because we're a general consulting company. But for for companies that want to learn it too, you could just go there and you could see all the different models, like a doc to vec model, for example, just a model. But these models, you have to know the steps. You know, you have to take all the, if you're doing language processing, you have to take all the text, lowercase it, remove all stop words. So if you have like the cat, you're just going to have cat. And you basically write that code and it bounces off of the model and it will produce some type of score of sentiment of positive or negative. But even with data science itself, it's still evolving. Like there, there's cool things like GPT-3 for Figma on the OpenAI platform. And I played around with it with some people I know and it has some cool outputs, but it's still not that accurate. So we're still in the elementary stages, but there are some things with machine learning, like cars and everything that are moving a bit more advanced, but there's still some work to be done, but those are the skills people need in the next five years to really excel in all industries. Do you think that all businesses in the next five years will have some element of machine learning and AI as they, you know, you know, I think the big barrier to entry for me that I'm seeing for a lot of people is, uh, a lot of the hands-on development needed is not something that they understand. Do you feel like these platforms will become simpler to implement AI so more people can use them? Well, that's even with the product we, we're building out and I'm, I'm doing a lot more marketing, more focused on some of the products we're building for consumers, but our company is more focused on business to business, but it's to try to get individuals behind the company. So even the product we're working on is supposed to make models that you talk about drag and drop, very simple and very affordable, like probably 50 bucks a month. And then, which I think most people could afford. And it's just, just like you said, if they don't want to get into the nuts and bolts, they could have a clean screen to do it. You don't even know how to need to know how to code. You just need to know what you want. Well, I'm excited for that future for you because I know the power of it and I do feel it will be a game changer. And it's almost like I've seen the web develop over the last 20 years or so where it went from, you know, hands on, everything's coded and then Dreamweaver. And, you know, now we've got CMSs for everything and a plug in for everything. I hope to see that evolution with AI. I feel like that will be very exciting on a lot of levels. So. Yeah, it's that's where everything's moving. Even websites, you don't like you talk to some hardcore programmers because I, I do a lot of like project management amongst other things, but I'm around these guys and a lot of them they'll tell me in the next five to ten years there won't be that much coding. It's all configuration. So we're moving away from coding, moving into that hardware that we spoke about, but moving into very clean screens that anybody with any background and low transaction costs. So it's more about the ideas for the product. That's not even about the technology. It's about the business side. Yeah. I love that. So Michael, as we're kind of wrapping up today, what are kind of some of the last final thoughts that you want people to know about where the industry is headed and um, where can people find out more about you? Yeah. So just in general, all industries, they're really moving to low cost areas. I think some of them will revert back to the higher cost areas. Uh, heavy emphasis on machine learning analytics, but very well-rounded individuals, just that you have the proper soft skills, the proper training, a hop around the bit with project management. You have methodologies, and I hope these aren't buzzwords to people, like agile project management and safe scaled agile framework. The economy pivots every two years. And since I'm a consultant, I'm always in between contracts every year or so. So I'm always updating my skill sets. Everybody should try to update their skill set and stay on top of the trends and look at what companies are hiring, what positions you want, obtain that education, build those projects. If you'd like to learn more about investment science and how we could help you, go to www.investmentsey.com. Thank you very much for having me. Awesome, Michael. I really appreciated chatting with you today and learning from you. We'll see you soon. You. Have a Bye. great day.